gosh, I don't know. Um, I think I really respond to um, electronic music and programming because of the way it's structured and the gridded nature of it and being able to go back and edit what you've played, um, partially because I don't really consider myself a virtu virtuostic, virtu <laughs> a very good musician, I guess. I mean, I, I don't think electronic music is very cool, especially not the way I do it, you know? I think there's a, there is a certain cheesiness in, inherent to it that, that I like to exploit. On the flip side, it can also be used to convey great emotion. I feel like there are still those moments in pop music where, where it does hit on a mass level, where a song comes out and somehow everybody knows it and everybody's singing it. Ultimately, it's, it's a challenge of getting through something that feels real to a lot of people through a, a series of um, very commercialized, very manufactured ways of making music. The last thing I remember being um, where everyone was connecting to sort of the same music at the same time was right after Michael Jackson died, especially in New York, just heard it coming out of cars and coming out, you know, out of every bar you walked by. I mean, that's the last sort of mass cultural music sharing experience I can remember. When I was in um, the Gaskets, it was never about being alone because uh, my bandmate Ross and I were would write together all the time. We met in uh, in high school, um, and he was this army brat, um, kind of like druggy at a really young age and totally different than me. But uh, he was really into electronic music and Aphex Twin and you know all, all these sort of experimental electronic bands, and I was you know, just listening to a lot of Counting Crows and being very, you know, writing some like love ballads on the piano or something before I had any love experience. And so we first came together and, and would just joke around basically. He would play his electronic music that he made and I would just scream lyrics over top of it, whatever came, came on the top of my head at the moment. To me, you can build a song in so many different ways. It doesn't just have to be the normal chords and, and melody. You, you can just build an entire song off of a bass line or, or build an entire song off of a, a weird noise, you know, that, that sounds vaguely musical to you. And then, you know, you add the, the structure and the, and the music later. You fall in love with just a certain sound. Um, Ross was a troubled soul. He, um, he was an alcoholic. And, um, and ultimately just, he wasn't able to keep being in the band. I mean, he, he just didn't have the responsibility. In the last um, six months, we had kind of, you know, been back in touch and, and whenever I was in Richmond, I would stay with him. And then, uh, and then a couple months ago, he, uh, he killed himself, um, which was, you know, a shock, but not, not a surprise. For the first time in my life, I'm working on a collection of songs that's completely personal to me. For the first time, I'm just responding to my own feelings, which is, I think, a lot of what people get into songwriting for. Um, but for me, it's a totally new thing. Ross's brother recently sent me his laptop, and it had um, all these GarageBand tracks of these half-finished song ideas that are these great little pop gems. So a lot of what I'm doing is just cleaning those up, trying to figure out a way to expand them into full songs. That's the other project I'm working on, is kind of a solo album for him, kind of as a, as a tribute, almost. So I can show you this one, for example. Started off as just a one-track guitar and, uh, and vocal recording. So if you listen to the original recording, it sounds like... I need you, I want you back. I'm serious as a heart attack. The rest of it's just because it's only one verse and one chorus, and even though I think his original recording is sort of haunting and beautiful in its own way, um, I wanted to see what it felt like to sort of flesh out the song with full instrumentation so that I could sort of repeat the same part over and over again but make it feel like it had a drive and a structure. And I sang some backup on this track as well. Thank you. 
Well, I think it's, um, especially at, since Ross died, just being able to uh, to go back and, and revisit the music we made together and also sort of now this process of making new music with him in a certain way. It's just kind of my last chance to, to collaborate. Um, and that collaboration was sort of the most important part of, of our relationship and the most exciting part. Seems like years since you held the baby And I wrecked the bedroom You said it's dangerous after Sunday But I knew you loved me He thinks I just became famous And that's what messed me up But he's wrong How could I possibly know what I want When I was only 21 there's millions of people offer advice and say how I should be. But they're twisted and they will never be. Any influence on me, but you will always be. You will always treated you mean I really didn't mean to but you know how it is and how a pregnancy can change you I see plenty of clothes that I like but I won't go anywhere nice for a while all I want to do is just sit here and write it all down and rest for a while I can't bear to be in another city One where you are not I'd return to nothing without you If I'm your girlfriend or not Maybe it sounds mean But I really don't think so You asked if I'm scared and I Said so Everyone can see what's going on. They laugh because they know they're untouchable, not because what I said was wrong. Whatever it may bring, I will live by my own policies. I will sleep with a clear conscience. I will sleep in peace. Maybe I was mean But I really don't think so You asked for the truth and I Told you 